Welcome back to The Exchange, everybody. Geopolitics front and center today as Houthi forces vow to retaliate to, for last night's U.S.-led coalition strikes in Yemen. It's raising the risk of a broader conflict in the Middle East, but it's uh, not the only geopolitical event investors are watching this weekend. Tomorrow's presidential election in Taiwan is another, and it could become a key test not just for relations in the region, but for U.S.-China relations as well. Here to discuss is former NATO Supreme Allied Commander Admiral James Stavridis and AEI. My senior fellow Derek Scissors. Let's begin with last night's strike, uh, Admiral Stavridis, uh, which sent oil prices higher by 3% overnight. Uh, so uh, this was something, by the way, that you, admirals called for uh, about a week ago in an op-ed. So tell us why this was the way to go now. Yeah, it's a bad pair of choices, right? But uh, door number one is just allow the Houthis backed by Iran to continue to take down merchant ships, uh, shoot at our warships, at merchant ships, take mariners hostage. That's a pretty bad door considering they are shutting down the Red Sea and about 15% of world shipping passes through there. Door number one, bad, just to let them keep going. Uh, your other choice is create some deterrence. Um, we've tried defending those ships, hasn't really worked. It's like trying to patrol the state of California, Red Sea, size of California, with 10 police cars. Those would be the destroyers out there. Really not gonna work. You're gonna have to go ashore, strike some of the Houthi maritime infrastructure, send them a signal, reduce their capability. I think the administration is in the right page even recognizing the chance that this could escalate further. What do these strikes say to or about Iran? Uh, first of all, they are a direct signal to Tehran. And by the way, it's not just the Houthis, it's all of the H's. It's Hamas, Hezbollah, and Houthis. They all have different agendas, different geographies, what they have in common. They're all creatures of Iran. So striking significant Houthi maritime infrastructure. It's proportional to these maritime attacks. It's well within the range of international law. It sends a signal to Iran that we're gonna start at the low rung on this ladder of escalation. Pay attention. Let's hope Tehran is listening. What if these, uh, these attacks don't do the trick and the Houthis uh, come back and keep misbehaving in the Red Sea? Then what is the next step up? You can go up that ladder, still in Houthi land, if you will, in the country of Yemen, which they own about half of. They're in the middle of a civil war. They have land assets. Their tanks, armored personnel carriers, their fuel, their ammunition. We could go after the means by which they are fighting this civil war. If that doesn't work, which would be your next question, mm -hmm. then I think you need to look at going after some Iranian assets. Boy, let's hope we don't get there because down that path, a wider conflict exists. I think at this point, the Houthis will probably come back another couple of times, then they'll probably stop. That's what happened last time we went through this cycle in 2016. We struck Houthi targets ashore, they backed down. Let's yeah. hope we see that again. Let's pivot, uh, if we might, to Taiwan and the elections there this weekend and get your quick thought on, uh, on what may happen there, if particularly, um, I guess the more, I guess I would say, confrontational candidate, William Lai, uh, is elected as president there. What, what does that portend, not just for Taiwan-China relations, but for U.S.-China relations? Yeah, this is the right question. I mean, we're all absorbed with what's happening in the Middle East. In the end, those are pretty much likely to be tactical. This is the big geostrategic amphitheater, the arena, U.S. and China. I think that William Lai probably will be elected. He's a follow-on to Madam Tsai, the current president. Their policies are not exactly anti-China, but they are further away from China than either of the other two candidates. The thing to watch as investors is immediately after the election, if Lai is the candidate, how high, how hard does China go at Taiwan? They're not gonna attack, of course, but are they going to 
put in a partial blockade? Are they going to open up uh, additional maritime capability around Taiwan? Are they going to shoot missiles that just miss Taiwan? Are they going to send aircraft across the Taiwanese Strait? We're all going to be watching those reactions after Saturday. That's interesting. So look for a variety, potentially, of provocative actions on the part of uh, Beijing. Admiral, it's always good to see you. Thank you for joining us today. You bet, Tyler. Admiral James Stavridis.